As you may know, we humans have an underlying structure uh, underneath the skin that allow us to move around. It's called the skeleton and it's uh, made of bones. But on top of bones, we have uh, joints, we have ligaments, we have muscles, we have layers of fat. I do have some layers of fat uh, that drive the skin. On top of everything is the skin. And if we didn't have that structure, the skin would be like a piece of fabric or, or a piece of, of rubber. It would behave like that. I'm pretty sure you come across, you have come across a, a representation of all that in the CG world, like in VFX movies. For example, The Invisible Man, I think it was called, with Kevin Bacon comes to mind, where they create that body in CG. We're gonna go a bit more simple than that. Um, but Maya has a deformer called Skin Cluster that allows us to create a similar behavior. Not as advanced as that, but it's really, really powerful and it's a really basic deformer. We can add a lot of things on top of that. But in order to have all these spectacular things like muscles and stuff, we need to have a really solid foundation. And that's why we are going to see how Skin Cluster works in Maya. The way Skin Cluster works is pretty easy to understand. We supply a geometry and a an skeleton. Both are here, the geometry and the skeleton made of joints. And then we assign, using a Skin Cluster, we'll see that in a few seconds, we'll assign or paint, and this is a key word, a part of the geometry to be driven by a particular joint or a set of joints, which means essentially that what we are going to do for this geometry that is like a kind of like a finger, we're going to make this joint to drive more or less this part of the geometry, this joint to drive more or less this part of the geometry, and the same thing with this one. And this last one, this joint four, we just build it as a helper for display purposes, but we are not going to to use this to deform our mesh. After working for a while with this particular geometry, what we want is to be able to rotate the joints and to deform the finger kind of like in this, this way. So we have three main areas that are going to be driven or deformed 100% by each joint. And then we're going to have like small, softer areas where we will have to smooth those weights. So we have joints, we have vertices and we have weights, uh, which is the value that connects the joints and those vertices. So if we do some quick numbers, let's see how many vertices we have here. It's like 100 vertices per three joints that will make a total of like 300 values for the skin cluster, which is 300, a total of 300 values that we have to juggle with in order to deform this geometry. It's not an easy task, so we need to come with, to come up with a strategy to be able to deform this uh, as best as possible without spending too much time. So let's dive in and let's talk about how to deform this geometry with these joints using a skin cluster. Rather than giving you a full overview about the tool with no context, I'm going to start working on, on, on the skin cluster and I'm going to explain you as we as the process unfolds. Okay, so we select the geometry, we can select one of the joints and we make sure to go to the rigging in this drop down menu and then skin, bind the skin and open the option panel and the option panel is somewhere. And these are the options that I have by default. We can bind, create that relationship uh, with the geometry and the joints using the selected joints the joint hierarchy, the object hierarchy. So in this case, we are going to select only these three. We don't want to select the fourth one and the cylinder. 
selected joints. The bind method, uh, that's like the way Maya assigns at default values. We are going to override that, so we don't really uh, care about this. The default one is closer distance, so let's gonna let's keep it like that. The skinning method, we leave it like that, and we leave everything right now at default. So we just like apply, we close, and then if we were to rotate this, well, we see that Maya has given us some default skin, which is deforming the geometry, but it's not what we are looking for. In order to change those values, we need to go to skin and paint skin weights is the command that we are looking for. Options, and then we see these colors. So this is the way Maya represents the influences of the joints. And it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Like joint one has an influence, if we move this a little, of like almost 100% here in the base. 100% is, uh, again, by default is uh, white, then goes to red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Same thing like this, like this is the loop with almost 100% influence of this joint and same thing like that uh, traditionally people in Maya used this I personally used to uh, like to use color ramp because I don't know if these vertices here have some influence from this joint but if I use the color ramp I can I can see that one thing that you should know about skin cluster and this is like a really 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 important thing is that the sum of all the influences, let's say this is B1, B2, and B3, for a given vertex, let's say this one, okay, the sum of all the influences of all the joint has to be always 1. That means that the value goes from 0 to 1, is a normalized value, okay? And this is really important to get a predictable behavior. So this vertex here, if it has an influence of 0 0.6 and then 0 0.4 for the second one, it will have no influence from the third joint. Let's, let me change the color. And same thing with this, for example. Uh, we see that it might have an influence of like 0 0.1 and then 0 0.4 and, oh, sorry, 2, <laughs> 0.7. So that means that if we were to increase this value, okay, the influence from these joints for this particular vertex, we need to steal values from here, or from here, or from both. Okay, we cannot add without subtracting uh, from the other influences. That's really, really important, and that's the key concept behind Skin Cluster. That being said, my next step is gonna be replace all these values for opacity 1, value 1. These are attributes or, or parameters that we're gonna play a lot with, and I'm gonna flood. So now I have given an influence of 1 to this joint for every single vertex in this geometry. What has happened with these other two? They are black. And likewise, if I were to flood this at one, I'm stealing from this one that used to have all the influences. So that's what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flood one. And then we have two options. We can paint, which let's do that right now. We can come here. Let's unsmooth that. Now we can Paint all the influences. Okay, let's do this and we'll work with this area later. And then we can go with this one. And for example, with this one, what we can do is select all the vertices that we want, come back to the tool using Y, and then same thing, replace, flood and it will flow only the selected vertices. And now we already have 
see, let me turn this off, joint 1, joint 2, joint 3. So if we were to rotate, oops, let's go here, rotate this, it's no, it's, it's not perfect, but it's closer to what we want for a finger. It, it's not as soft as the default Maya uh, weight. It's a bit harder, so we're gonna keep working on this. But this is like, for me, this is like the first step. Um, let me write it down. Is assign values of 1.0 to joints. In this case, this is a finger. This is really uh, this is really easy, really fast. But if we were to have like a, a human body, short legs guy, we would do the same thing. We can just like select this part and assign 1.0 float 1.0 to the correspondent join. Same thing, same thing, same thing. And that way, what we are doing is breaking it down to like smaller, smaller pieces. And this is exactly the way we want to work. We want to work from the very general, from the main parts to the particular, okay, to the details, to the smaller parts. So now that we have the main volumes deforming, what we need to do now is deform, working on deforming these parts and smooth it out, put a bit more time in order for it to look uh, nicer than it looks now. Before going forward, one thing that is really, really useful to see how we are doing with our skin cluster is to create a small animation for our rig. In this case, we only have like three joints, but we can do the following. We can just like make a key here and then Another key here, another key here, and maybe also we're gonna go to the other direction and see how it behaves. That way we can see the behavior without ever leaving the skin cluster, skin cluster panel. We can paint weights, we can change stuff, and we see how it behaves. So now let's move to the smaller parts. I'm going to um, lock influence. We mentioned that the influence, total influence for a vertex has to be 1, which could be 0.6 plus 0.3 plus 0.1. We have these icons here, which are the lock attribute. When we lock an influence, that means that whatever tool we use to replace values, to scale, to add or to smooth, that are pretty self-explanatory. If we lock this one, nice lock here, that means that whatever we do, this value of 0 0.1 for a given influence won't change. So if I were to replace like this value for point, let's switch colors, point, Eight. If I lock it, it will steal values from here, and this will be 0 0.1, because this is not moving at all. If I unlock it, then it will be 0 0.2, it will take 0 0.1 from here, from here, 0 0.1 from here, and add it here, but because it's locked, Okay, this will stay at 0 0.1. And it may be complicated to see all these numbers and stuff and visualize it in, in the head, so let's let's go to it. By locking the weights on joint 3 and make sure that I'm not going to change any of these. So if I were to, uh, like, imagine, replace this by 1 and start painting here, Now, 
I start painting here one. You can say like, hey, Igor, wait a second. We locked these values. Yes, we did. See, I'm painting, but not really. Or I paint here. These values, 100% of these values are still assigned to join three because we have locked these values. So it's a good practice to uh, lock and unlock joins as we as we go normally like human body or yeah human body is made of cylinders right like we have each arm is a cylinder the torso is another cylinder its legs cylinders fingers are cylinders so that makes things easier because we only need to work in pairs like we are going to do now so one easy way to do this is select this loop of vertices grow the selection go into the tool and we can smooth one two three and we see how that transition looks a bit better and we can do the same thing now we lock this one Grow in the selection, we do one, two, three. And uh, it's uh, it's a bit softer than I would like, but it's closer to what we have, uh, to what we want, sorry, and it's better to what we had. So now with a pose like this, what I'm gonna do, and I recommend always waiting like this and using this just to check the model is going to be rendering like this so this is what we're going to see but i'd rather see what is really happening in the mesh okay so now what i can do is i for example select this loop go in here and what i want to do is that loop to the form less with this joint so that way it will stay a bit harder so i can for example scale you okay, can scale Let's see a value of 96, for example. See, and I'm removing influence from joint three to these vertices. And that influence, because joint one is locked, is going to joint two. We can see how that is working. And I can do also the opposite, like removing a bit influence from here. So it looks a bit better. And we'll do the same thing with this. Just remove a little float, 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 scale, a value of 96. So it's multiplying its value by 0 0.96. And the same thing with this one. 